This video is designed to teach you about lysosomes. The main function of the lysosome in the cell is to break down waste products. Think of it as like the cellular janitor. If we take a look at an animal cell, we'll begin with looking at where the lysosomes are located. Uh, it points them out on here. If you notice, this is connected to another one of the organelles we were talking about. This lysosome is one of the vesicles that are leaving the Golgi apparatus. Now the Golgi apparatus produces a lot of things, and, and it doesn't just produce lysosomes, but it is one of the things that it produces. And ultimately, if we're talking about things it's connected with, it contains enzymes, enzymes which are made of proteins, proteins which started technically in the ribosomes and in the endoplasmic reticulum. So one of the things you should be thinking about as we work our way through this chapter is how some of the organelles are related to each other, how they interact inside of the cell. But uh, to focus a little bit more on the lysosome, it says it breaks down macromolecules and digests worn out cell parts. Uh, for the most part, the lysosome is either going to be breaking down things that the cell is absorbing. We'll actually talk about a process through which the cell absorbs things directly through the membrane. Uh, another thing that they're responsible for is breaking down waste products, like things that the cell no longer needs. It says worn out cell components. Usually these are things like ribosomes and other smaller organelles that are no longer functioning. The cell kind of breaks them down into their component parts and recycles them. If we take a look at our plant cell here, you'll notice that the lysosomes are missing. They're uncommon in plant cells. Some plant cells have them, most do not. The um, somewhat comparable thing that they have are called peroxisomes, which aren't used quite as generally, but uh, they're basically just breaking down what are called uh, long-chain fatty acids. So they're breaking down certain things that the, uh, the plant cell is absorbing, but for the most part they're not as general as something like the uh, lysosomes are. So even though there are some of these different things shown inside the cell, like these open little vesicles from the Golgi apparatus, they're not lysosomes as we have them in animal cells. So if you're thinking about differences and similarities between animal cells and plant cells, the lysosome being pretty much an animal cell only uh, organelle is certainly an acceptable thing. Uh, last image to look at, as we always do, is the transmission electron microscope. There honestly isn't a whole lot to see here with this one. It has a membrane around the outside of it, as all of the other organelles do, and then inside there are enzymes. Um, enzymes are special proteins that are designed to break down other molecules, at least in this case, if it's a catabolic enzyme, it's, it's breaking things down. Um, some enzymes also build things, but in the lysosome, uh, they're focused on breaking things down, and um, those enzymes, again, are coming from proteins that are made in the ribosome and then transferred through the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the proteins are going to differ depending on what that lysosome is breaking down. So it'll use a different enzyme if it's, say, uh, breaking down a carbohydrate as opposed to breaking down a ribosome. So they are built specifically for you know, whichever task that lysosome will be completing. Uh, last thing to look at, as we always do, are the functions for this organism. Just to get ourselves a little list going, the first idea here is that it's involved in the breakdown of cellular parts. These could be either worn out parts or things that need to be digested and then used in the cell. Another one here to remember, and not so much its function, but an important point, is that they are not common in plant cells. So hopefully this helps break that one down for you. To be honest, I like to end with the lysosome because I think that these are relatively easy compared to some of the organelles. I also like that you can draw some connections between this one and some of the previous organelles that we discussed. So as I said before, you should start thinking about that, how these organelles affect each other, how they impact one another. None of them operate on a totally individual basis. Uh, each one is somehow connected to at least one of the other organelles inside of the cell. As always, thank you for watching and hope you learned something.